It's Isaac again um, with Emerald Design, and I am going to show you another thing about working with the Amazon KDP templates. Um, these templates are great. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it's a huge jumpstart to publishing your book yourself. Just go to Google and type in Amazon KDP templates, and you'll get a ton of Word files that are already formatted to all the appropriate sizes that KDP offers. So this is a five by eight template um, that I'm working on and I'm doing my book in Word here. Um, so what I wanted to show you is how to um, create a TOC, a table of contents, if you want a table of contents. Um, now the template uh, comes with the table of contents here and I guess you just have to fill this out manually, uh, but because Word has that same functionality, I never ever use it. So, um, all right, so I just start by selecting the table of contents and deleting it. And then um, I'm going to go with insert, um, let's see, index and tables. And, so I choose the second one, table of contents, and then the key thing that you want to do is just pay attention to the information here, right? So it's saying heading one will be at the first level, heading two will be at the second level, and heading three will be at the third level. Um, now we are working with the styles pane, and I have sort of built, built off of the styles that are provided um, with the KDP templates. So um, we're not using heading one, two, and three at all. And if you're familiar with Word, you'll recognize that blue color, Calibri font. Um, and, and, um, but the, the Amazon template has these uh, styles already laid out for you. Um, the one that we want is the chapter title, right? So we need to modify the index um, and oh I'm sorry not modify we need to go to options so go to options and then this will bring up our exact styles panel right um, in shorter form so what I have to do is delete um, heading one two and three and then I have to find the style that I actually want to use um, which is the chapter title oh, stay on one Cool. So the chapter title will be at level one. All right, cool. So now I click OK. And then I have this really simple one, CSP chapter title. Um, and then I will simply uh, click OK and insert it. All right, now everything that has that, that chapter title style um, is included in my table of contents, right? So it's really, really good to think about how you want the table of contents to read as you're laying out the book, right? And then just think to yourself, well, you know, whatever I want to appear in the table of contents, I want to use that CSP chapter title, chapter title. And if there's anything, if there's something that you don't want, to appear in the table of contents, um, then do not use that chapter title for it. So here's, for example, so if I have um, prologue and then I press return and I'm still working in the same style, I'm still in the chapter title style, then I write um, a very un unfortunate, uh, very, Okay, prologue, a very unfortunate beginning. Now I right click on my um, contents and I'm going to update field. If I update the entire table, watch what happens. It enters, um, it enters those things because they have a line return, right? It enters it as two separate entries. So prologue is on page one, a very unfortunate beginning is also on page one, um, but that is just the name of the prologue. 
right? That's just what I'm choosing to call my prologue. So I don't want those to be separate entries. Um, so I have a couple of options. Here's option one. Instead of a full return, I'm going to do a soft return. Um, so I'll just delete it, delete the return, and then I hold shift and press return. Um, now watch what happens when I update my contents. Um, so I go to update field and um, update entire table. Cool. So now I have everything on one line. I might want it that way, prologue, a very unfortunate beginning. And then I might want, you know, chapter one, etc. right? Um, so, and you can see there's stuff missing from here, right? So why is one not in here? Well, if I go and click on one and then check my style, I can see that it looks exactly like the chapter title style, but it's not. Um, so that is one of those things I talked about in the other video where if you delete the line return, and paste something in, it'll look exactly like it, but it won't have that exact style. So, um, so this is what I constantly need to check that everything I want is in the, the chapter title style and everything I don't want isn't in that style. So, okay. So back to, let's do another update field. And by the way, this is right next to toggle field codes. Those two commands seem really similar, but this one is is kind of miserable. Um, this is like the the deep part of Word where no one no one dares to tread. But um, so make sure you're using the right one, which is update field. Um, all right, update entire table again, and I want to see one. Okay, cool. So using a soft return, um, I can get a chapter title like this that has multiple lines, like one into the mountain of Mordor, right? I can get that all to appear on one line in my TOC, right? If something is missing from my TOC, then I have to go to the appropriate channel, uh, the appropriate chapter, and I have to find the thing that should have appeared and make sure that it's, it's actually set to chapter title style. Now, finally, if I want to eliminate something from chapter title style, but if I want to eliminate something easily from the table of contents, then I just make sure that it's not in chapter title style. Um, so I can take this and um, highlight it, and then I will add a new style, and I will call that style, uh, you know, looks like chapter title, but not in TOC, or whatever you want to call it, just to remind yourself. Okay. Okay. Great, so um, with this highlighted, I apply that style. And now um, I can have whatever title I want for my chapter and just know that if I want it in the TOC, it's gonna be um, the chapter title style. If I don't want it in the TOC, I use the not chapter title style that looks like it, right? Now um, I right click again and um, update my field again and I'm gonna update the entire table and then press okay. Cool, so, so using all those things together, you can easily make a TOC and manipulate exactly what's in it. Um, I'm all, the other thing you could do with the TOC is um, you can actually change the font even though it doesn't look like it. I'm not using uh, Calibri, um, I'm using this font, so I can, I can update it to match the rest of my book and it all looks good. Uh, but I think if you need a if you need a TOC, it's really hard to build one manually. Um, you know what I mean? It's just it's just a huge pain in the butt, especially because as your layout changes, your page numbers will change. So it's really um, powerful and in your interests to use the TOC functionality in in um, in conjunction with the the word based styles. Um, let me see. Oh, one more thing about this, okay? Um, so when you, um, so now I have my TOC, everything is accurate, right? If I wanna see chapter eight, I'll go to 124. Boop a doop. There's chapter eight, that looks perfect. Now, when you upload a Word document into the KDP previewer, you'll see that um, KDP has its own way of reflowing text. So what I notice is that 
you know, usually um, the KDP reflow is bigger than the word reflow. And what that means is that um, my, my table of contents will be accurate, usually to the first four chapters. And then, um, and then in the second half of the book, um, all of these are off by one page, right? Um, so the way to get around that is, um, I think when you're doing KDP, it always kind of focuses on you working with Word and uploading a Word document. Um, but your page numbers will never be right if you just directly upload a Word document. So, um, but Word makes really nice PDFs. So just for the print version, if you do file, um, file save as and choose the PDF option, then um, your book will come out exactly as you see it in Word. Um, but you do need a Word file um, for eBooks. You absolutely need that because um, a book on an e on a Kindle has got to be reflowable. Um, if it's not reflowable and you'll and you're stuck with PDF pages that you that you can't change the size of the font, like no one will want to read um, that book on Kindle. So, um, so to sum up, um, definitely use the, um, the table of contents functionality in Word and get to know styles and make sure that what you want in the table of contents is only set to that one style. And remember that you can make as many styles as you want that look exactly like that style if you want to, if you want to continue to use it. Um, the KDP will recommend that you upload a Word doc, but if you have a TOC, you should never upload a Word doc. You should always upload a PDF um, because a Word doc will shift in the KDP interface and your TOC will be wrong. Um, all right, so that is all I have for you today. Thanks for watching.